Let's revise lessons 8 to 10 from the student book. Lesson 8 The Elephant's Nose This is a story of little elephant who lived in Africa with its family. He had questions about everything. One day he got himself into trouble when he tried to find out what the crocodile ate for dinner. So he went to the river and there the crocodile grabbed him by his nose. Because of which his nose which was earlier short and round became longer and longer. With the help of snake he could save himself from the crocodile. However his nose remained the same. And later on, as he moved on, he realized that his new nose was very helpful to him. And afterwards, all the other animals also wanted a nose like him. Let us have a look at the MCQs based on the same. First, who saved little elephant? Crocodile, snake bird it is the snake second where did little elephant go to see crocodile river forest zoo he went to the river third which adjective best describes crocodile adjective means a describing word which is used for a noun Helpful, willy, innocent. The crocodile was neither helpful nor innocent. It was willy. So the answer is B. Willy. Fourth, who sent little elephant to the river? Uncle giraffe, aunt ostrich, bird. If you read the story carefully, you will find out that it was the bird that got angry on the little elephant and he told him, you go to the river and find out for yourself. Little elephant asked Aunt Ostrich about her dash feathers. Neck, tail, wing. The answer is tail feathers. Let us move on to poem 9. Little talk. The poem goes something like this. Don't you think it's probable... That beetles, bugs and bees talk about a lot of things, you know, such as these. The kind of weather where they live, in jungles tall with grass and earthquakes in their villages whenever people pass. Of course, we'll never know if bugs talk very much at all because our ears are far too big for talk that is so small. This poem ponders upon the thought that if insects could talk, what could they be talking about? So it was a beautiful poem. Let us see a few true or false based on the same. First, people are unable to hear the insects. Yes, it's true. Second, the insects feel a cyclone whenever people pass by their villages. It is false. The insects feel an earthquake whenever people pass by their villages. Third, we will probably never know if beetles talk at all. Here, the question is a little twisted. The last stanza of the poem says... Of course, we'll never know if bugs talk very much at all. Here the word bugs refers to all the insects, which includes beetles as well. And therefore, it is true. Now let's move on to revising lesson 10. What made the Dalek laugh? This is a story about a giant frog called Titalik in Australia. 
he has been sleeping for many nights and many days and then when he wakes up one fine day he wants to have all the water in the world so he drinks up all the available water bodies around him which means that no water is left for other animals to drink and as we all are aware that no one can live without water so then a wise wombat advises the animals to make the dalik laugh so that whenever he opens his mouth in order to laugh all the water that he has drunk up will pour down pour out from his mouth let us see answer in one word from the same chapter first where did the dalik live the dalik lived in australia second who advised the animals to make the dalik laugh the wombat advised third who made the dalik laugh it was the platypus that made the dalik laugh what was the platypus doing the platypus was sleeping when all the other animals were trying different things to make the dalik laugh the platypus had been sleeping when he had to wake up because of all the noise on the surface he came up he was very angry went to the giant frog and told him you have broken my sleep you have disturbed me and from the appearance of the platypus the dalik found it very funny and he started laughing right let's see a few more examples fifth where did the dalik go first to drink water the dalik went to the stream first sixth who was thirsty the dalik was thirsty seventh which adjective is used for the wombat adjective means a describing word the word used for the wombat is wise we have called him the wise wombat eighth a very large body of water that covers large parts of the earth is called ocean similarly names and descriptions of other water bodies are also given in the student book please refer to it in order to revise i hope we have successfully revised all the three chapters from lesson 8 to lesson 10 I want that all of you should go through the poem and both the lessons read them aloud learn the question answers go through the vocabulary and words to know and have a happy revision time happy revision